Hey folks, welcome back. So we're down here at some local docks, um, you know, and through the grapevine and the little bird told me that they're going to be doing a fish shocking here today. So I'm going to try to get all this on, on video. Okay, folks. So they're putting the boat in for the fish shock and they're doing the creek first, which is really cool. So let's go see. You guys are not going to want to miss this. Okay, folks, we're about to start this shock program here. You look good on that stump there. So that's their little shocking mechanism there. It looks like a fishing net without the net, and they've got little little uh, clips on it with wires hanging down. It runs into a generator up there. Wow, that's that's pretty cool setup. And they got a generator right there in the middle. I put this together with, you, you can tell, like the anodes are just homemade and with the net, with the telescopic paint poles. But it works. It is a smaller boat and it's good for getting in these tighter, tougher launches. Um, I have a bigger boat where two people stand up in a cage in the front. These, you just kind of spread them. They're going to fall down when they hit things, but just to kind of spread out the electrical field a little. Um, I do have a kill switch in the back. So even when the generator is running, all I do have to do is let my foot off that. Like if, I've never had someone fall out of my boat. If, if they did or there's some other incident, all I do is take your foot off. The generator's still running, but there's no power in the water. Um, obviously, don't stick your hand in water. You'll feel the shock. It's centered around the front of the boat. Uh, that's why we use either fiberglass or wood uh, handle poles for electrofishing. You use metal. You're going to find out real quick why you shouldn't. But, yeah, that's it. I'm going to hop in first. Then I'd say whoever's in the middle next, and then the last person can kind of help push it off. Okay. All right. So this is electro fishing, they call it. It's probably a big carp over there. Oh yeah. Yep, those are carp there. Yep, lots of gizzard shad down there. I see them all popping up. Oh yeah. Wow, look at all these carp they're getting out of here. Oh, there's your bowfin. He just pulled up a bowfin, yeah. There's a lot of bowfin popping up out there. He keeps saying, we got enough bowfin, we got enough bowfin. I think they got one, you know. That one was too. Wow, look at all those shad out there. Oh, he's got something out there too, a big carp. This is super awesome, folks. Oh boy, look at the size of these carp. Oh yeah, that's another bow that's fin. A nice bow. Look at the colors on that one. All right. Wow, that's a giant carp. Oh, there's another bow fin right there. Wow, nice and green too. Those green fins. Oh yeah, some big carp in here. Oh yeah, look at the size of these carp, folks. A lot of carp in here. Oh, there's a bass. Okay, so we're out back doing our spring fish survey at Menor Marsh and Marsh Creek. Uh, we did the Marsh Creek site first. Um, a couple of fish that were very well represented in today's sample, um, but one we didn't net were common carp because they're so big. Uh, they're clearly up in the shallows, probably actively spawning or very close to it. Um, the most abundant fish overall were gizzard shad, um, which isn't a surprise, but there's probably the average size one. 
Um, we saw a few of them up to about a foot long. Now most of them were smaller, so lots and lots and lots of those. Um, not nearly as abundant as gizzard chad, but still moderately abundant. We had a lot of emerald shiners. Uh, we can always put them in that tank later if we want close-ups for high okay. I mean, that's just a typical uh, emerald shiner. Um, one neat fish we expected that is always here this time of year, but uh, was a fairly abundant, our um, bowfin. That's a, a male. It has its eye spot and has its nice green fins that it really only has this time of year, greenish blue. Um, got an even bigger one in here. And again, I will say, um, I don't think the fish we collected are completely representative of what's out there because I just, the electro fishing just is not as, as um, effective as it normally is. But that's a, we take the bird back to the tank. So <laughs> um, one interesting thing, normally we get a lot of bronze colored, natural colored goldfish and common carp. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I only remember seeing this one, and we got them pretty early I on. I think we saw one more. So that, that is the uh, non-native goldfish. Yeah, that's yep. the Japanese silver carp. I looked them up because we okay. catch them a lot here, yep. a lot, trying to perch fish and crappie well, fish and such. It's technically, it's a goldfish, yeah. but um, it might be another common yeah. for them. Uh, goldfish aren't all orange. That's actually the more typical color for them is gold. Right. Yep. Oh, my gosh. You got some big ones. <laughs> So again, we uh, only netted, we kind of cherry picked for uh, diversity because we had this small tank. There was an interesting catch. Um, it's the first time I've seen this here. Not, it's not a new species, but the life stage. Um, normally, when we see rainbow trout, this is really interesting. Um, somebody want to fill that tank, put a little water in that tank? It's, um, it's a, uh, they're not native. Steelhead, rainbow trout are stocked for sporting purposes. Um, this is a naturally produced one. Um, it's the state hasn't stocked them yet. The fins are in great shape. Um, at least I would double check that the nearest stock area would be the Grand River. And again, I don't think they've stocked it yet. If they did, it could be a fish that migrated up from that stocking. But its fins are in perfect shape, which indicates to me it's probably wild. Which is wonderful. That is super good news. <laughs> We didn't see a pike. Not one. I think that if anything, uh, the water temperature situation. So Joe was making the observation wherever he went. Um, he was doing pretty well um, sport fishing for pike last year in May. And like this wise angler, he noted the water temperature was um, uh, 60 degrees. Well, the water is 60 degrees right now. And that was late May. So according to water temperature, we're like a month ahead of oh, schedule. Yes. So oh, the pike might have already spawned and he was catching them out towards more towards the lake or the lagoons. So they were probably had already spawned, they're post-spawn, they're down there feeding heavily like a lot of fish. And then appropriately named uh, uh, bluegill sunfish, bluegill. Um, didn't get a ton of those, but we got a pretty typical number that we see here. There were several. Uh, I think we might have another Oh yeah, good call. Whoever said green sunfish, that's exactly what that is. So green sunfish as well. Um, if you want close-ups of any for like eye naturalist or anything, we can we can do them in the viewing tank. And I'm doing close-ups here because I can only. Oh okay, the, the nest shine. The yeah, video. there's nothing rare or unusual at this point. What we typically expect, if anything, there's just been less uh, diversity than you know. like largemouth bass. Um, even though it's in the sample, I would tell you to. Um, wait and put this on the marsh sample because normally from the bridge in we right. count that as the marsh sample say we just continue chalking back and we did not get this fish till after we crossed the bridge um which is funny because normally we get a lot of largemouth bass down there mm -hmm. in marsh creek a uh, female most yeah. likely still oh, yellow yeah. bags oh, yeah. go. so nice healthy <laughs> little large young mouth. ones <laughs> nice, nice i think that rounds it out did we see anything else we mentioned lots of common carp abundant gizzard chad by far the most abundant for today sure. um less goldfish far less than usual usually there's more carp and we still get a lot of goldfish black bass is a generic subgroup i shouldn't say generic but it's a subgroup of the sunfish family that includes 
largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass. That's a largemouth. Okay. So it is a black bass, but right. more specifically Right. It's a gotcha. Gotcha. There's a trout they believe is a natural respawner. You can tell because it doesn't have the worn down fins that it normally would have. Let's see if I can get them to corral here just a little. This is a... He just doesn't want to be held. It is a natural rainbow. And it hasn't to have any wear on his fins. Normally these fins would be all worn down to nothing, little nubs. The tail would be all, the tail on this fish would be all rubbed raw from the concrete tank if it was a stock trout. So that's a good sign to see a naturally reproduced steelhead or rainbow trout so far. But yeah, you can get a better view of the, of the fins there that are not worn down which is a super good sign. Okay, folks, we're gonna let these bowfin and all these other fish go here. Let them go back. This is just for scientific purposes. Let's see. It's a little muddy now. So. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> These are the bowfin. Super green fins. Where'd he go there? He could probably come back this way. Oh, he got him. He got him. And then there's that largemouth. And then we'll let him go. Okay, folks. Well, they're out to do the survey in the marsh. Um, Thanks for sticking around. This is a super cool experience here to see this. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Talk to you soon.